Welcome to Mix and Mingle. I'm Stacy Dennison, your host, bartender, and, and craft, craft cocktail, cocktail connoisseur. connoisseur. Join me as I interview some of the Bay Area's best bartenders, and we teach you how to make the perfect drinks. Cut. Sorry. <laughs> I, I got all tongue-tied and flustered. Hi, welcome to a special wedding edition of Mix and Mingle. I'm your host, Stacy Dennison. Tonight, I have a very special guest, Mr. Chad Cadwell from Spunky Spirits Mobile Bartending Service. He's going to be showing us some uh, wonderful wedding cocktails to make, and that is why I'm dressed in my wedding attire with my fascinator, as the Brits call it, uh, in case you were wondering, a bird did not land on my head. <laughs> so, uh, Chad, um, Chad spent just a little information about Chad. Chad has spent the last 20 years in the hospitality industry. He's worked everywhere from bars, restaurants, uh, resorts, cruise lines, anywhere you can think of. And uh, Chad, welcome to the show. Thank you. Happy to be here. Mm -hmm. Happy to be at VPN and also representing Spunky Spirits. Awesome. How about you tell us a little bit about Spunky Spirits? Sure, I'd love to. Um, Spunky Spirits is an incredible group of eclectic, creative, passionate people mm -hmm. in the hospitality industry and they're all all professionals. We have almost 80 bartenders that work for wow, us. Wow, that's a lot. It is a mm -hmm. lot and we did uh, 520 events last year. Well over half oh. of those are weddings so we do a lot of this and we're good at it. Mm -hmm. You guys are. Yeah. We sure are. And we're part of a really cool community um, of people and organizations that work really, really hard to make sure that the special day, the most special day of anybody's life, mm -hmm. right, is even that much more special. Absolutely. They go the extra mile. Want to give a quick shout out. Some of them, mm -hmm. uh, Amici's Catering, VPN Studios, Wedding cinem Cinematographers. Uh, we work with Blue Sky Events as an event planner a lot, mm -hmm. among many other incredible event planners. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's exciting to work with people that are so passionate. Uh, for as far as photographers go, there's a ton of them in the community. Oh yes, there uh, are. But we have uh, some great ones with uh, signature events, photography, cake. We have cake providers, uh, piece of cake, Grant Heeman and Associates, uh, Athena's Bridal Boutique. We have some great venues that we mm -hmm. love to work with: Carrollwood Cultural Center, Casa Lantana, Creative Loafing, Davis Island Garden Club, um, Epicenter Event Center, which is a great place in Lutz. Uh, we got Old McMickey's Farm we work with a lot, uh, St. Pete's Bridal, uh, St. Pete Beach Recreation Center, nice and also location. the Tampa Garden Club, mm -hmm. all of whom just mm -hmm. really go that extra mile to make mm -hmm. sure that uh, our bridal parties and um, all their family and friends mm -hmm. and everything come to a great spot. Have a great Gotta time. make the bride happy. Yeah, <laughs> tell you what. So, uh, Chad, what drinks are you going to be making for us tonight? Well, we, we brought a sampling of something that we would we'd like to, to, to at least consult our wedding parties to, to go for, which is kind of a custom drink menu, mm -hmm. so we can really kind of cater to the needs of a wedding. Sometimes when the when the reception gets over, or excuse me, when the... Um, ceremony? When the, excuse me, mm -hmm. thank you. When the mm -hmm. ceremony gets over, we sometimes have 100 to 150 people lining oh, up at the bar. Oh, they're rushing that bar for sure. Right, so no matter... <laughs> the so open no, bar starts, everyone's amen. going to that bar. Yeah, so no matter how many bartenders you have and how many bars, you're going to have a line. Mm -hmm. So these cocktails, some of them are set up to really provide that really high-end craft experience for mm -hmm. people. And we really know we can kind of funnel the people and know what they're going to drink because mm -hmm. it's hard to know, right, yes. sometimes what, yes. we, what, our, what our guests are going to drink. That's one. right. And then other drinks are kind of catered to be able to pre-make them. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we do try to focus on some specialty cocktails that are relatively simple that we can keep pre-made mm -hmm. uh, and make as we go and pre-make right. them and continue to refill them and just pour six, ten at a time. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's really some of the benefits to having a custom cocktail mm -hmm. menu. So and today... People love custom custom cocktails at uh, weddings too, like signature drinks. I know a lot of brides love to have a signature drink at their wedding. Absolutely. And you guys and for have good the reason. best menu too. Yeah, so today... Mm -hmm. Uh, we're featuring uh, something old, something new, something borrowed, and something blue. Love and it. you enlightened me about what that yeah. meant. Yeah, so uh, I was just telling Chad before we started taping that uh, the history of the something old, something new, something borrowed, and something blue is actually the something old is supposed to represent continuity. 
The something new is uh, it's supposed to be a symbol of optimism for the future. Something borrowed is borrowed happiness. So make sure if you're a bride out there uh, watching tonight, when you get your, you know, something old, something borrowed, something blue, you borrow from someone happy. <laughs> and uh, the something blue stands for purity, love, and fidelity. So. Important things when you're getting yes. ready to tie Absolutely. that knot. Absolutely, old traditions. Yeah. So the first drink we're going to be making is the Shh. old, the something old. Sure, oh. and it's an old fashioned. I love a good old fashioned. And I tell you what, we don't make bad old fashions around <laughs> here. We really take pride in that. Um, and for all the bourbon drinkers or rye or whatever, you know, um, the preference is it can be made a lot of different ways. Um, we're going to start with kind of a classic recipe, and then I'd love to share just a little bit of a Florida twist on that, okay. if you All would. Right. So tonight, we're going to start with the Maker's Mark mm. bourbon. Mm -hmm. um, we also used, I, I started these 48 hours ago. These are a drunken cherry, um, and really, uh, we basically, just so you know what we're going to be using, and we're going to use it mm -hmm. in a couple different ways, uh, but we pit cherries and a really easy way to do that is to take like the end of a chopstick okay. over a soda bottle and just poke oh, that poke that out okay. and it, it's a great way to get the pit out of the cherry fill it about two two thirds of the way full and we boil water honey mm -hmm. vanilla mm -hmm. and some orange uh, orange peel nice. and we boil that mix it with bourbon pour it over the cherries and let it sit for about 48 Ooh. hours um, that's Some sweetness. more boozy fruit for those it's that were watching fruit. last week. Sure, drink. sure, it's drunken <laughs> fruit, um, and we can use the we can use the liquid uh, as kind of a base mm -hmm. um, with along with our sugar to kind of to break up that that strong bourbon taste. Okay. So that's what we're going to start today. All right, All right, sounds good. So just a just a dash of sugar. Uh, some people will use some people will use um, some people use water. But mm -hmm. because we're going to be using some of our liquid mixture here mm -hmm. instead, um, we're going to go ahead and just use a little bit less sugar than normal. I used to use two dashes of bitters. Okay. We're going to get just some of this liquid in here. Just to give us something to muddle with. Mm -hmm. I'm going to break that up, get that sugar. And you're using the, are you using the sugar in the raw right now? I'm using or? sugar in the raw, yeah. that's correct, okay. yep. Um, if you can get your hands on rock candy, rock oh. candy is really, really good okay. in these as well. Let me go ahead and put that right yeah, there. Yeah, I think they still sell that at like Cracker Barrel or something. I'll yeah. bet that's the yeah, case. Yeah, they have like the old time candy there. So, we like to use globe ice as well. So is that slower in melting? It's slower in melting mm -hmm. and it's just a lot more surface area. It's cleaner mm -hmm. um, and I just really like how it looks. It's really cool looking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take my cherry and a lot of people like to muddle their oranges and their and their mm -hmm. uh, cherries. I prefer not to muddle so much. Mm -hmm. um, I just like to squeeze it out just a little bit. And because I spent so much time on these cherries, we're going to go ahead and put two in here. Okay. Squeeze that just a little bit. Hold off on that. I'm gonna give a good solid four count. Four. It's a healthy pour. <laughs> it's a wedding pour, you know? <laughs> and then we're just gonna give it a good stir. Make sure we get all that sugar mm -hmm. and sweet from the bottom. Man, that globe ice is fun to look at. I don't know if you guys can see that, <laughs> but it's literally like a globe of ice. I know that sounds stupid, but it's cool looking. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, I, and I've not had a whole lot of luck with it, but you can make them absolutely clear, I've heard, if you boil the water first. Oh, okay. I've not had any luck, but I, mm -hmm. but I did read that online. So you can make absolutely perfectly clear ice by boiling the water first. That's cool. So that's our first cocktail. This is the old segment nice. of our old. Nice. All right new, borrowed, and blue. Let's get into the optimism for the future now. <laughs> love it, love it. So this is a new cocktail, um, and we're really excited to share this one. Uh, this has been something that we've had some pretty uh, strong interest in. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called the Spiced Pineapple and Pear. And we're gonna start by just um, wetting the rim with mm -hmm. some lime. Okay. And I'm going to 
dust the gas edge with some cinnamon and some sugar. Mm -hmm. Nice. Hence the spice. Go to my ice bin. And I'm gonna ice my glass. So the um, the choice for this, we're gonna we're happy to be using Code Rum. It's mm -hmm. a local Florida rum. This stuff is off the chain mm -hmm. good, and we're really happy to be using this today. It's a spiced rum, um, and then also we're gonna be using just a small amount of amaretto. It's about a three to one mix. Um, so, and I'm just gonna go ahead and pour this directly on the ice and, and stir this cocktail. Uh, Chad, I just want to mention that Code Rum is actually one of our sponsors. So big thank you to Code Rum for sponsoring our show. Yep, good looking out, good stuff. Two more times. So just a little, a little tiny bit of the amaretto. Yep, little it's splash. about, it's three to one. Okay, okay. So it's about an ounce and a half of the rum and about a half ounce of uh, the amaretto. Okay. All right, and then we're gonna use some half and half pineapple juice. Mm -hmm. We're also gonna use some pear nectar. Oh, okay. You can get that in any grocery store. Well, mm -hmm. Publix for sure. Again, we you love know, Publix. <laughs> and Publix would be a great sponsor for the VPN for this show Publix for Mix and Mingle. Publix would be a great sponsor. Publix. <laughs> Give that a nice little stir there. That's right. Give it a good stir. Could be shaken as well. Um, but a lot of times when we're rocking out on weddings and we've got, mm -hmm. you know, we're 12 we're deep fast. at the bar, yep. we got to move. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then a nice little pear garnish. Beautiful. Pear garnish. And a pineapple garnish. And a pineapple garnish. That is and beautiful. that's our cocktail. That's the, the new. That's the spiced that's pineapple and pear. Yeah, we don't play. Yeah, those are a couple of good-looking cocktails right there. Hey, they're going to taste good, too. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, how about we take our cocktails and step into the lounge area for a little mingle session? Let's do it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Be sure I don't get a... Pear in the face Don't here. Don't take a pear in the face. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> that's delicious. Good. Mm-hmm, that is good. So, um, as I mentioned to our viewers a little earlier, Chad, you have been kind of all over the place. And uh, in addition to working for Spunky Spirits, you also serve as um, Director of Development for AMI Kids, right? Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that. I'd love to. AMI Kids is an incredible organization. Uh, they started right here in South Florida, um, or in you know, in Florida about 50 years ago, mm. with the idea that we have to provide kids a better alternative than kicking them out of school and putting them into detention centers. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm proud to be the director of development. Now Absolutely. we've grown from grown from serving three, six, nine kids at a time to about 3,500 a year. Wow! Nine states, 44 schools, and I service all 44 schools with. I work with basically fundraising and doing development work, some strategic planning, working mm -hmm. with their boards. We have 400 board members that I work for. Oh my for. gosh, that's a big board. It's a big, <laughs> it's, they're all independent boards that mm -hmm. we work for. So mm -hmm. it's a really interesting, dynamic job. I get to work with incredibly pe incredible people that are passionate about helping kids. Mm -hmm. And we're incredibly effective at it. Three million kids a year drop out of school. A million of them get locked up. Mm -hmm. It's a vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. um, and. We're just really proud to be so effective and efficient at getting these kids a new chance, mm -hmm. giving them a better chance and a better Sounds future. Sounds like a great organization. Awesome. So where would um, our viewers find more information about AMI Sure, kids? great question. Um, AMIKids.org is a really good place to start. <laughs> okay. Uh, right. That beautiful World Wide Web uh, is a great place to start. <laughs> And we're always looking for help of any sort, um, jobs, mentorship opportunities, and, and, and dollars. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of really cool things that are happening right mm -hmm. here in the Tampa Bay area. We have four schools mm -hmm. in the Tampa Bay area serving kids as low as sixth grade all the way up to, um, you know, 18, 19 year old wow. kids. So. Well, we here at VPN Foundation love helping out the kids. We are all about uh, benefiting our education for children. So uh, we're on board with that. Awesome. And um, so, 
Now, you, as I had mentioned, um, have kind of been all over the hospitality industry. Tell me how you got involved with bartending and working in hospitality. Sure. Um, when I was a young man, um, I started. we started a kayaking outfitter with a good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was a very short season. I'm from South Dakota. Mm -hmm. um, I bet that is we, a short season it, up well, there. It's a short <laughs> season, so we had to figure out ways to supplement the rest of our year. We were doing what I, we loved in the summer, and we had to find some way to make a, a good life for ourselves, you know, in, mm -hmm. in the off season. And fell kind of naturally into mm -hmm. bartending. Love being around people, love mm -hmm. being social, and meeting new folks. And um, I like beer and cocktails too. Yeah, I mean, and it's wine. not a bad job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and people are always thirsty, yeah, so <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. you can always find a job in bartending. Yeah. Now, um, as I had mentioned, you've, you've also worked in. Uh, resorts and on a cruise line sure. too so tell me about that how was that sure um I spent a lot of time in the caribbean i went to school at the university of the virgin islands mm -hmm. i was doing some bartending down there and running a water sports shop for a bunch of years had a great experience met all these cool bar owners worked as i was getting my hospitality management degree mm -hmm. Um, so we got to do a ton of internships to include working on some cruise lines, working at the That's Ritz Carlton awesome. and Fr Marriott Frenchman's Reef mm -hmm. and all these incredible um, hospitality providers to include mm -hmm. really like, you know, the Ritz Carlton where you're doing, you know, champagne service, you know, mm -hmm. bedside or poolside to a place like these barefoot bars, you know, shirts and shoes mm -hmm. are optional kind of places. Right. And you really get that wide gamut. Uh, that's really provided a lot of context and some great um, great ways to kind of implement some of the things we learned into Spunky because mm -hmm. Spunky is so, we're so mobile. We're always mobile. We're always yes. moving. We never know what we're going to get till we Spunky get there. Spunky Spirits Mobile Bartending Service. That's the idea. <laughs> Lucky enough, we get to work with some incredible venues that mm -hmm. we mentioned earlier. Yes. Um, yes. And you become familiar with the venues that you work at a lot. Yeah, so, definitely. It's yeah. kind of a close-knit community in the event community. Incredible, mm -hmm. the people in this community mm -hmm. that are working to make these days special yes. for our brides and grooms. So uh, getting back into the bride and groom and the wedding aspect sure. of the show, since we are the wedding edition of Mix and Mingle, um, tell me, when you're a guest at a wedding, you're not working, you're actually there for fun, you're supporting a friend, family member, What's your go-to drink? Wow. Well, you know, I know that if it's a spunky bartender, I can mm -hmm. gas for anything that I can dream of, <laughs> right? High quality, friendly, efficient bartenders. Um, that's my little, my extra plug for spunky. <laughs> um, you know, I really, depends on, you know, the, the accommodations and the driving situation, but I really just like to have a good cocktail um, <laughs> that's made well. If there's a featured cocktail, I'll certainly try anything that, that that they're featuring. Mm -hmm. we, that's why we push our brides and grooms to consider that um, mm -hmm. because you can really kind of tell what people are going to drink and yeah. I would probably be follow right along with the rest of them. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right. So um, I know a lot of our viewers are probably curious about this, but uh, tell me when someone is at a wedding or event and you have your tip jar out mm -hmm. and at the beginning of the event, they put a large bill in there. Do yeah. they... Is it true that they get preferential treatment, if you will? There's no question about it. Um, my advice to people going to weddings and you're not paying for your drinks, tip big, Yes. tip early, and tip small often. Like, mm -hmm. take care of people. Or, yeah, <laughs> that's my guy. That's my guy. <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> our producer, Von Reed, over here, throwing down the bills, making it rain. Man, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> That's awesome. Good man, good man. Uh, so, uh, everyone tip your bartender. That's hey, the important tip thing. tip the bartender. <laughs> cheers so, to that. <laughs> cheers. Or, and I'm drinking a code rum drink, so I'll say, huzzah. Huzzah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chad, this is an interesting question. Yeah. If a specialty drink at an event was named for you, what would it be? Wow. Um... Well, I told you, I, I'm born and raised in South Dakota, and I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm kind of a, I like to consider myself a country boy. Mm -hmm. uh, so it would be a dirt floor wedding, and there's a hoof print <laughs> in the ground. That's what we call rustic in the wedding. This is a maybe. rustic wedding. This is a rustic <laughs> western wedding. You pour a little whiskey in the hoof print, you drink it out of the hoof print. All right. Call it the cowboy. That's what I call it. I love it, it the cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, this is a question I like to ask all my bar guests. All right. Describe 
your ideal bar in three words? Ooh, um, it's absolutely a full bar. Uh, <laughs> is first so full, well stocked, full, well okay. stocked with okay. lots of variety. Um, Spunky's awesome about mm -hmm. that. They, yeah. We really provide a really good kit when we go to our venues. Mm -hmm. um, and I need a, a bar that's organized yes. because sometimes there's one of us serving over 100 people and a lot of times they all come at the same time. Mm -hmm. Right before, right after the, the ceremony, mm -hmm. right before dinner and right after dinner, we're yes. getting slammed. So it really has to be organized. And then, gotta be clean. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Gotta Hands be clean, down. so clean full, organized and clean. <laughs> so my last question for you tonight, Chad, is Tell me the craziest or most awkward thing that you've witnessed while working. Wow. Well, uh, did see a groom chop up a handmade arbor that the bride's oh, like brother a, made. Like for the altar, like one of those yeah. pergolas. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Chopped it up with a chainsaw, threw it in his truck, and left before the reception was over because wow. he was so sick of the whoever's mother or whatever. It was a mess. <laughs> that sounds like It was like pretty a awkward. You like need a lot awkward. more whiskey for yeah. a wedding like that. That's when you just start uh, free pouring the whiskey for everyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, let's. Uh, how about we go ahead and start making our last two drinks of the evening: the something borrowed and something blue. Awesome. Let's do it. All right. Cool. So the next one is a real staple and and. You know, everybody knows how to make a screwdriver, right? Mm -hmm. If they don't know how to make a, or if they don't know what a screwdriver is, they know the ingredients. It's very simple. Yes. It's simply vodka and orange juice. Mm -hmm. um, what I would like to talk about today is maybe some ways that we can spice it up a little bit. So okay. before I ice this glass, mm -hmm. what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an orange slice. I'm going to take a little bit of sugar. Mm -hmm. And the reason we do that is because it'll it'll kind of break up some of that acidity. And then uh, I'm going to put a little bit of salt in that as oh, well. Interesting. And that'll kind of take the edge mm -hmm. off of that orange juice. One other really good way to make the screwdriver um, a little bit more interesting is using a really high quality orange juice, even uh, fresh squeezed orange oh, juice. If you're yeah, making them at home, idea. man, if you're making them at home, it's all about that experience for your guests. Mm -hmm. You can absolutely let them watch you squeeze these orange juice very efficiently. Mm -hmm. um, honey bells are awesome. Valencia oranges are awesome. And we're in Florida, so make yeah. sure you're using good orange juice. Definitely. Don't use a jokey, or, you know, don't use some janky orange juice. <laughs> so we're going to ice that glass. Nice healthy pour of vodka. Hey, it's, I'm telling you, it's a All wedding right. pour. So at this stage, I have a couple different options here. Mm -hmm. We could do a lot of different things with it from this drink. Now this is a this is a full pour of vodka. If I poured a little bit less vodka, I have two options to really kind of switch it up. Mm -hmm. um, if you add, if you make it a three to one vodka and, and really amaretto, cool. you can make a bocce ball, and oh. it's a little bit of orange juice. Um, it's a really nice cocktail. It'll mm -hmm. kind of it'll kind of uh, flatten it out a little bit for you, mm -hmm. um, and kind of break up that vodka. I like to use Cointreau, which mm -hmm. is an orange liqueur, mm -hmm. um, and we're gonna just give a little shot of Cointreau in there just to make it interesting. Mm -hmm. And then um, we can also do some things like uh, use flavored vodka. We mm -hmm. can do a bunch of different things, but I think the key to a good screwdriver. Is good Florida orange juice. Yes. And these would make a really good sponsor as well. Indian River Select, come with it. We love local. We love Indian local. River. Wink to you too. <laughs> Give that a stir. And even though I have an orange in the bottom of the glass, I gotta make sure that we get it mixed in good. And you can shake this as well. Can actually do that on this one, no problem. Show us some fancy shaking. Oh, I don't know about <laughs> fancy, but oh, I hate when that happens. <laughs> but I promise I won't spill. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Love you, April. <laughs> <laughs> April, I, I saw that. I felt for you last week, sister. And that's our drink. 
That's a screwdriver. There's a lot of different ways we can make it cool. So that looks good. Yeah, it's nice, that's refreshing. No screwdriver. joke. No joke. Mm -hmm. It's still a great. It's a great cocktail. And if by featuring something like that on a wedding menu, mm -hmm. we can really push people. Because so many people come to the bar. What's good? What do you have? Yeah. If we can give them an option, we can kind of funnel what they're going to order, and we can plan for it. We can have extra bottles of vodka, we can have extra orange juice, etc. Mm -hmm. And it's really, e it's much easier to manage a group of 150 people mm -hmm. that are drinking. And it's kind of, sometimes weddings are amateur hour. Yeah, true. So, <laughs> so we have to be careful. You know, you, people are coming out and they're drinking more than they're used to or they're drinking things that they mm -hmm. don't normally drink. I'll take this opportunity to say, uh, please drink responsibly and great. don't drink and drive. That's a great uh, point. Please call a friend, Uber. Oh yeah, them. Uber's amazing. Use Uber. So, all right, our last drink today is our something blue, our uh, fidelity, purity, and love drink. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so, this is something that, um, another kind of a variation on a relatively simple cocktail, but we, the reason we like to do this is because, once again, it's something that's new, and it's interesting, and it's fresh, and it's, it's easy and light. We always want to have something kind of lighter yes. that we can pre-make that um isn't you know people can have four or five they're gonna be there for four or five yes. hours sometimes so it's really important to make sure they're that gonna we be have dancing sure <laughs> they're and gonna get hot they're gonna want something refreshing absolutely and once again with a cocktail like this i don't actually dance like that. oh <laughs> once again i'm gonna i'm gonna spice this up just a okay. little bit and i'm gonna muddle some blueberries mm -hmm. and some lemons in the bottom of that so, Chad, I don't know if we told them or not what the something blue is. It's a blueberry lemonade. Sorry, please mm -hmm. forgive me. It's mm -hmm. a blueberry lemonade mm -hmm. that we're going to make right now. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to use some, some vodka. You can, you, you can do some variations on this as well. You could easily try some flavored vodkas as well. Mm -hmm. um, but this is just going to give it a little bit of color. Nice. And we're going to shake this one also. Which is his dance move, the uh, Oh, that's my dance move. <laughs> I have some other dance moves, but that's for a different show. Okay. All right. All right. So, I'm also, we made, we pre-made some blueberry simple syrup. And basically, it's just... Um, sugar that's been cooked down with water and some blueberries and then we strain the blueberries out and it gives us a really nice, a nice color, color yeah and some sweetness mm, that looks good and choose a good choose a good lemonade too um for 150 people it's hard to hand you know to hand make your lemonade but mm -hmm. um for a small party at home you don't want your from concentrate basically right use mm -hmm. a good quality mm -hmm. use a good quality juice when you're making mm -hmm. something like that oh you did spill <laughs> oh, all right wow. april it's all fair now <laughs> um but i told you i like a clean bar so we're gonna fix that <laughs> all right and then a simple garnish and another nice thing about um if you know what you're gonna make and you know you're gonna make a lot of them. You can prep. You Put can prep right your garnish. There, yeah. So everyone sees. That's beautiful. That Simple, is a beautiful drink. Simple, easy, light, mm -hmm. enjoyable. You can drink in Florida in the summertime, and it's great. So awesome. there you go. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Chad. It's been a pleasure to have you on the show, and these cocktails were amazing. I love the fact that Spunky brings uh, craft cocktails to the wedding industry. It's not just your usual, you know. Uh, rum and coke or you know something like that you guys actually bring the classy craft cocktail I love that cool. so uh, on that note a big thank you and cheers to our sponsor this evening spunky spirits I'm getting my drink here give you your drink to uh, toast Ooh, right. if you would like uh, big shout thank out to you. code and cheers to code rum or a big huzzah, huzzah. as you guys like to say and uh, also a big thank you and cheers to our producer, Von Reed. And a big thank you and cheers to the VPN Foundation who has made this possible. <laughs> Flashing the cash that Von tipped uh, <laughs> Chad over here. 
And uh, once again, please drink responsibly, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us this week. Um, if you are a bartender and would like to be on the show, please drop a comment below or email VPN at info at vpnfoundation.org. Thanks so much, everyone. We'll see you next week, Tuesday night, 9 p.m. live. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>